Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Navs Effect Podcast. I am your host, Naveen Ganglani. We've got a fun episode today. We've got Zayn Mahmood recently committing to the USD Growling Tigers. We have him on to talk about that. Also, to promote his team, <coughs> Filipino Canada Nation, Phil Can Nation, in short, part of the Phil Am Nation group competing in the NBTC tournament in a few days. So we can't wait to hear from Zayn. But before we get there, first, a quick word from our sponsor, Fitspire. Are you ready to transform your home into a premium fitness haven? Look no further than Fitspire, your go-to destination for top-notch home gym equipment designed to take your fitness to unprecedented heights. Immerse yourself in a world of possibilities with their versatile range of premium gear, including yoga equipment for serene workouts, adjustable dumbbells and kettlebells for customized strength training, roller wheels and push-up bars to sculpt those abs and arms, jump ropes, foam rollers, and stability balls for an all-rounded workout experience, stylish and efficient cooling towels to keep you refreshed, and sport water bottles for staying hydrated in style. Fitspire's equipment is not only durable but also space-saving, allowing you to create your dream workout space without sacrificing aesthetics or functionality. Whether you're a fitness novice or a seasoned pro, their collection caters to all levels. And here's the real game changer. As a special treat for our podcast listeners, we're offering an exclusive 10% off on your purchase. Simply use the code word NAPSEFFECT10 upon checkout at www.sunbeamslifestyle.com. It's our way of saying thank you for choosing Fitspy. But that's not all. For an even more seamless experience, download the Sunbeams Lifestyle app, available on both iOS and Android platforms. Browse their collection, stay updated on fitness trends, and exclusive deals. Transform your fitness routine from ordinary to extraordinary with Fitspire. Don't just dream about your fitness goals, achieve them in the comfort of your own home. Visit www.sunbeamslifestyle.com, use code NAMSEFFECT10, and let Fitspire be your fitness companion on this incredible journey. All right, Zane, welcome back to the podcast. I know this is your second time guesting on the Navs Effect podcast. I'm happy to have you on again. Last time you were here, sometime last year, we were still discussing what are your potential opportunities as you look to play college basketball in the Philippines. Now, here you are. You have just committed to the USD Growling Tigers. You are going to play in UAAP Season 87 as a true freshman. Five years of eligibility and the Filipino Basketball Nation is going to see you or rather see an early preview of what you're capable of if they haven't watched you yet in the past. When you compete with Phil Can Nation in the upcoming NBTC tournament to be held in March. So Zane, how has life changed since an Announcing that you have committed to the USD Growling Tigers. Did you suddenly have more followers from USD, more people messaging you, teammates reaching out to you? I mean, how does it feel now that it, what was really a two year process has finally come to a conclusion, knowing where you're finally going to land? Yeah, well, I feel like the biggest part of it is that it's kind of a weight off my shoulder. I know what I'm going to do, I know where I'm going to be. And I think that has kind of made basketball a lot more fun lately, even just training, because like I, there's a goal there. And in, t- in terms of, like, um, teammates and um, just the, the following increasing, it's, like, it's all been very, like, I don't want to say overwhelming, but it's been um, it's been overwhelming in a good way. I'm glad to receive all the love from the UST fans, um, uh, the likes and the clicks, and um, I'm just ready to get in there and um, show what I can do. So why UST? Because when we last spoke, I know that Ateneo was, you know, something that you were interested in. Maybe NU as well was interested. And I believe University of the East expressed some interest as well. But ultimately, you chose to go with the UST Growling Tigers. And what was the ration, or rather the rationale behind that? Why did you decide to be a Growling Tiger? Was it the playing time? Was it the opportunity to help a popular basketball program kind of get back to where they were a long, long time ago and were they trying to get back? Was it simply because you just liked the coaches, the teammates? You know, mm-hmm. what led to this decision? Well, it was a little bit of everything you said. And I think on top of minutes and um, things like that, I think I just want to be a part of a rebuilding and stepping into something great has its perks. I feel like being a part of 
a shift in the dynamic of what's going on is just as good and probably even better because then it feels like you were there to help build it brick by brick, stone by stone. And I feel like if I can contribute to um, a, a winning season for us at UST next year and just seeing some success, whether it's a championship, whether it's getting a lot more wins or pulling out some upsets of, that people might say, I'm just looking forward to um, <clears throat> just getting in there and playing my part. And um, I did, I, I, of course, I spoke to the coaches and, um, you know, I, I've spoke to some of the players and I think that the culture shift over there is coming. And I think that USC is going to be a name that's in the headlines all year next year. Oh, for sure. I agree with you because I've been watching and commentating some of their games for Pinoy Liga in the offseason and the promising potential is really there. You can see the guard rotation, how deep it is with Forsky Petrogao, Cal Paranada, Jeremy Robinson, Ashton Andrews to some degree, Lela Nestacho, Iceland thing. So much talent um, in that mm-hmm. roster. So many different players looking to help bring UST back to championship contention. They haven't been titled contenders since the 2019 season. The last time they made the UAAP finals under coach Alden Ayo. And of course, you still have Nick Cabanero, Christian Manaitai, a solid FSA. I think that's going to be Peter Awesome. And now you add... Zayn Mahmoud to the mix. You're about 6'7", if I'm not mistaken, right now. Legit big. You can play the center spot or the power forward spot. Gives USD some extra girt, some extra size, some rebounding, some interior scoring. To me, the addition of you really gives this USD attack a well-rounded dynamic because they were still missing that big man presence. Now, Osang is really good. He's a solid FSA, but he's not as tall as the other FSAs, but, but Adding you to that front court with Peter, the two of you together, could change that and make things a little more difficult for USD's opponents coming up. Have you envisioned, Zane, what your role will be with this team? What did the coaches tell you they expect out of you in your first season? And what do you want to bring? And more importantly, have you learned the popular USD chant already where they start singing Go Ste? Because that can really wake up the UEAP community and not just the U- UST community the UAP community as a whole everyone loves that chance so have you learned that yet um well I'm still familiarizing myself with the culture over there but I think on top of on top of all the great things that the team has I think that I bring I bring a strong inside presence but I also believe I'm able to stretch the floor really well and dominate inside out I think uh, I have a pretty complete game and I want to be able to demonstrate that full game and crash the boards. And, you know, we'll talk to coaches about game planning and stuff. I think I'm a guy who can really grab it off the board, go coast to coast, finish it up strong, or hit the open three or bang down low. And even though, like, I'm not as tall as some of the other, um, the FSAs in the league, I still think that I have the strength and the IQ to be able to compete and bang with them just as good as anyone. And I'm just looking forward to, um, in, like integrating with the team and seeing what coach uh, Pido has to offer. And as well as just, like I said earlier, like getting back on the winning track and bringing us back to that championship. And I promise you as fans, I'll familiarize myself with the culture. As the time comes closer and um, I'm just looking, so, uh, looking uh, forward to being a part of something big. So you've worked on your three ball because I know that was an area you really wanted to focus on after the last few stints with the national team and your last few high school seasons. So compared to maybe like a year ago or the last time you were in the Philippines for the NBTC tournament, how much has your three-point shot improved? Because that's going to be a very important weapon for you to add to your arsenal if you really want to establish perhaps a pro career in the Philippines. I've always been a pretty high percentage shooter, but I'm not too many, I'm not a crazy clip. And I know there's been some articles saying that looks like I can shoot the ball. And um, throughout my high school here um, in my senior year, I shot about 45% from the three point line and uh, oh, wow. hit a few big shots from deep. So I'm just looking forward to showing off that like, you know, the big man can't shoot, the big man can get down low, whatever he needs to do. And um, I just been working on my game overall, but the shooting aspect has definitely been a big one. Fantastic, because that's going to be another weapon for the USD Girl and Tigers to use. There's a lot of quality shooters in that team already, as is. Have any of your teammates reached out, maybe messaged you on IG or other platforms to kind of just say, hey, Zane, welcome to the team. Looking forward to having you. You know, guys like Fortsky, maybe Kyle, some of the guys you might already know. What's the dynamic there so far? Hasn't been 
too rich yet. We haven't really connected, but I know Ashawn. I've been talking to Ashawn a lot, and um, we've had a connection since before even I committed, and as well as uh, I talked to Fourth a little bit. We messaged, and um, also with um, with Nick, we have we exchanged some follows and we exchanged a few words. So I'm just looking forward to um, you know really getting to meet everybody. And uh, when I touched down in the Philippines, um, we head over there that same or the next day, I believe. So I was looking forward to really just, you know, meeting everybody, really making it feel real, you know, when you're there and you see all your teammates and like a couple more months, I'm going to be right here with them. Do you like how yellow could probably look on you, that USD yellow? Yeah. I mean, I've never been one for um, <clears throat> uniform colors and preferences, but I think that it'll look good. I, you know, I can make anything work. So, you know, Coach Pedro has this tradition of, not just the rookies, but really the entire team shaving their heads and going with yeah. the ball, the united look. Uh, some players have actually gone as far as to say, hey, no, I'm not doing that. I'm going to just leave the team because I don't want to do that. But then, of course, some players feel it's the solidarity factor. It's the camaraderie. Mm -hmm. It's the togetherness of the team. Now, it hasn't translated to wins yet, but it just might the season with a deeper roster that you guys have. So, Zayn, are you looking forward to maybe shaving your head this coming season? I don't want to spoil too much, but I guess there's only one way to say it. After talking to Coach Pido and the bosses, um, they've looked to revert that rule. They're just oh. looking forward to winning. And as well as um, seeing success and not scaring away recruits because they have to shave their head. Because hair is a big part of identity. And as much as right, like right. united you can be, there's people who want to have a sense of individualism and that definitely threw away some like scared away some recruits. So after talking to him and that was actually one of the first questions I asked him just to get that <laughs> out of the way. Cause um, you know, I got a nice curly hair. Yeah. You got your, you know, it doesn't there. get in the way. It doesn't affect my game, but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm hearing from what I'm hearing that rule has been reverted. Interesting. They just Interesting. Win. We want to win over there. Oh, it's a new age, you know. Well, it is a new age for basketball in general, where you know the players really have more say too about what they like, their identity, like you said, what they want to establish, who they want to be, and that could be good for USD in the long term. And also, we get to see you guys really flaunt your styles, your different do's. I mean, everyone's creative nowadays, especially you with your curls, like you said. Right? We might even see you in a ponytail or a bun or something. Possibly, we'll see how it grows out. I don't like. To, I don't like it to get to like past my nose length right now it doesn't fall in front of my eyes so when it starts to fall in front of my eyes that's when i take action trim it down but i've rocked the ponytail before so we'll see how i'm feeling i just might have to copy you with that zane i gotta ask you know when we last spoke you did say that you were excited about the potential of joining the ateneo blue eagles and if i'm <clears> not <throat> mistaken i don't think ateneo actually made a concentrated effort to recruit you over the last few months from the conversations I've had with you that I've had with your managers, your, your presentation, were you disappointed, especially given that you got to meet coach tab last season about potentially joining Ateneo? Were you disappointed that Ateneo did not make more of an effort to add you to the roster? Also, you know, especially given the fact that you did play for the national team and the connections that are over there. Well, I first want to say that was a pretty hasty wording of me last year to say that um i was grateful for all the teams reaching out and you know i just said the wrong things but on top of that as much as i can be disappointed and not happy that they didn't push to recruit me i'm not gonna sit here and mope you know you gotta go where you want you're wanted and if they wanted a half half pursue me half not pursue me i don't want that for my career because i know i'm all in wherever i'm at so seeing the the excessive interest I don't want to say excessive. I mean that in a good way, like the abundant interest of UST and um, just really feeling like, you know, they want me. Like they're not looking for a big, they're looking for Zane. And I really, um, I think that's a big part of what attracted me to the program and um, going to play over there. So as much as I can be disappointed and, you know, it was the opportunity that I could have played with some of my fellow Phil Lambs and, you know, even Gilas teammates, I'm still grateful for where I ended up. And it's not at all like a consolation. It's better. Because, you know, they wanted me. And you got to go where you're wanted as a basketball player. Absolutely. Go where you're valued. I can't wait to talk some NBTC with you, Zane. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, Get Blue. Attention all Ateneo supporters and fashion enthusiasts. Get ready to elevate your game day style with Get Blue's latest masterpiece. 
the all-new hoodies. These aren't just any ordinary hoodies. They're the best Get Blue does ever come out with. Crafted with precision and passion, each hoodie is a testament to their commitment to quality and style. And guess what? They come in three stunning colors. Cream, Royal Blue, and Navy Blue. But wait, there's more. The new hoodie features textured and embroidered patches on premium peak fabric, ensuring a luxurious and comfortable feel like no other. It's the perfect blend of style and comfort, making it an absolute must-have for the remainder of UAP Season 86. But here's the best part. You can own this game day essential for only 2,500 pesos each. That's right, premium quality at a great price. But remember, true fans always buy original. Avoid imitations and support the Ateneo Varsity teams in style by purchasing from Get Blued's official stores. With Get Blued, you're not just buying a hoodie, you're investing in the pride and tradition of the blue and white. Don't miss out on the opportunity to stand out in the crowd and show your unwavering support for the Ateneo Varsity teams. Get your hands on the new hoodies today and let your Blue Eagle pride soar to new heights. Visit Get Blued's official stores to secure your hoodies now. Hurry! Quantities are limited. Okay, we're back with Zayn Mahmood. Now, Zayn, you're going to be part of the Phil Cam Nation under the Phil Am Nation umbrella, competing in the NBTC in about a week's time. And you've got some solid players in your team. You know, aside from you, I believe Alexander Pachuki is also going to be joining Phil Cam Nation. He's someone who's garnered some interest from college teams in the country, as well as, of course, when you look at the Phil Am Nation team, Jacob Bela, a good friend of yours, is a you know, stands out right away, and he he's also a, a potential blue chip recruit coming in in season eighty seven. So, Zane, tell us more about these Philam Nation teams coming that you're going to be a part of. Who are some of the players to watch out for? Who are the guys that you think will make an impact and leave a an impression, a good first impression, and a lot of the Filipino basketball community viewers who will be tuning in for the games. So first of all, with my Phil Cam Nation select squad, we got some youngins, but I don't see any reason at least six or seven guys don't end up getting recruited because we got so much depth and we're such a great squad. I'm not even the tallest guy on the team. We got a big name, Xavier. He's going to come in and uh, dominate the inside presence. We got Gabriel Obusan, who was a UST commit. It just didn't pan out for the first year. There was some trouble with some paperwork and some other stuff you'd have to ask him. We got Angelo Vega, poised point guard, moved to play prep ball in the States. He knows what he's doing. Of course, like you said earlier, Alex Pachuki, knockdown shooter, um, great size. And, um, you know, we even got some, we got high flyers, Jordan Morgan, a high level defender, um, great motor. Um, and then we got some youngins like Lorenzo, Angelo, another Angelo. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, overall, it's like, Although um, although Phil Lamb Nation Select obviously has some talent, you know, like you said earlier, Jacob. Jacob is obviously going to stand out. Jacob's a dog, one of my best friends. We got Caleb Harris coming back. Um, You know, Jaden Jones. Um, Even some high-level recruits, um, D1-level caliber guys who are coming for the ride to try and secure a championship. I still think that no team should sleep on us. And we got guys who can make noise and, I don't see there's I don't see why there's a reason we can't win it all. And on top of that, great coaching staff. Coach Ronick is our head coach. One of my um, I've been with Coach Ronick since I was um, in the sixth grade. Know him really well, so I know he's got how he's gonna coach. He's gonna push us to hit it like hit it stride and just get as many wins as we can. And we got Coach Ray, the director, Phil Can Nation. He's a big part of it. Coach Mark, and then the staff. Like honestly. I'm sorry if I missed anybody, but I think one through however many people we have in our program for Phil Can Nation that will make noise and will have a lot of success. Definitely. And I'm sure that the teams will be curiously watching, seeing who could they <clears throat> recruit. Maybe even not for 2024, but even beyond, right? Because I believe <clears throat> not even everyone's going to be eligible right away for season 87 in the UAP or season 100 in the NCAA. But you can never be too early, especially if you're a college basketball program, to see who you might want in the future, which is one of the reasons why your name was prominent even as early as 2023, because people knew, okay, this guy's going to be eligible. Season 87 is going to be someone to watch out for 2024. Let's get to work about potentially recruiting him. And one of the teams whose eyes you caught was UST, among others, of course. 
what's the latest with Jacob? Have you been speaking to him? Where's his mind at? And because I'm sure that a lot of people in the Philippines are curious about where he might end up. Do you think you're going to be competing with him soon in the UAP perhaps? I think perhaps it is uh, something that can happen. I've obviously picked his brain. You know, we're really close. I don't want to say too much. He's evaluating his options and whether it's here in the NCAA or if it's there playing the UAAP, I think that he'll strive to do his best and play his best and wherever he ends up. So I don't, I can't speak too much on that, but I think he'll make the right decision. Do you feel that there's a certain stigma from the local, not the local players, but maybe some of the local people watching the games regarding you guys coming from abroad, the Phil foreign players. And do you feel because of that stigma, you need to make an extra effort to establish yourself, one, as a Filipino citizen, a Filipino resident, and two, a Filipino basketball player? I mean, of course, I understand that um, from the outside looking in, I could see how it looks like a spoiled kid from North America comes in and takes a local kid's spot, you know, and I feel like that's a big stigma. But I don't want to say it's completely fair. You know, we all put in our work over here. You know, I know guys working out two, three times a day. I'm working out myself two, three times a day to put in the work. And coming in there with a high motor and I'm ready to learn, just be a sponge to everything I can pick up on and integrate as quickly as I can. Because I played for the national team before, so I kind of have an idea. I know the college level is completely different. I'm lifting my weights. I'm trying to eat good. I'm just trying to be ready as I can. And for me personally, I don't want this Sigma to be behind. Oh, it's another spoiled Philam kid who's not ready. You know, I want to be ready. I want to show that, you know, I, I can play here. And I'm not just taking somebody's spot. And I'm a true Filipino. So, like I said, I'm trying to learn more about um, the UST culture. I want to, um, one of my goals is to learn Tagalog and um, just really feel, I want people to feel like, I'm a fellow Kababayan and I'm not just a an overseas kid who had a passport. So learning Tagalog, eating properly, lifting weights, what are the other, you know, things you're doing to prep yourself physically and mentally for your eventual trip to the Philippines and eventual foray into Philippine basketball? Mm-hmm. So I have I'm lucky uh to go to such an accommodable high school, but since I'm a senior, I do have a lot of free time. They often let me in the gym, they get shots up whenever in the mornings during school hours if i don't have class after school i've been ru- i've been um running track and field kind of cross training um i'm not much of a competitor i'm not the fastest guy but it's more for um staying in shape and just um trying new things just to um get my body flexible in different ways and just train a little bit differently and um i'm just getting my mind right you know a big part of having a clear mind right now for me is thankfully i'm committed to usc and it just gives me the mindset of just go in there and dog everybody and work hard because there's nothing to lose, you know? It's just that I got to show got to show out, you know, show the USD fans who I am and just reintroduce myself to the Philippines because it's been a while. I know that you and Sean Alter are boys. In fact, I still remember that one time you the three of us had breakfast and you mm-hmm. guys seemed very tight. But are you looking forward to maybe scoring Sean, maybe even try to put him in a poster or something? Man, Sean. I love Sean. Sean, I know you're hearing me. Sean <laughs> Alter cannot guard me. All right. <laughs> I have I got countless clips of give me giving Sean on Alter buckets. He might be the flashier dunker, more athletic, but Sean, you cannot guard me. And I'll see you on the court. <laughs> okay, okay. I like it. Zane laying down the challenge. I'm looking but, forward but, to the uh, yeah. Yeah, he's he's very talented, obviously. I'm just <laughs> I'm just goofing, you know. But yeah, I'm looking forward to playing not not only against him, but um a lot of my fellow Philam and Phil Can- Phil Canadian friends like um Devin Fikes and Kian and on UST. Um playing with Lorenzo again. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Even if it's not gonna be next year, you know, practicing seeing him again, that'll be fun. Seeing Jared on the court, you know, on uh, uh, Porter on the court. So I'm just looking forward. There's a lot of people that I wanna remind them, hey, I'm here. Right. Right, right, right. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the first USD-UP matchup this season when you and Sean are in the court together. Because also, in addition to that, USD and UP kind of have a rivalry a little bit. What are you going to do when Jacob Ayla tries to put you in the poster? Are you going to try to block that? When Jacob tries to put me in the poster? Man, 
you can ask Jacob what happened this year when we played two and all. Um, but because me and Jacob play in the same high school league, and uh, I like I said, Jacob's a dog, one of my favorite teammates ever. But he's not dunking on me. Right, he's I, not dunking. I, I like this competitive fire you got, man. You're gonna fit right in with that USD community and how they <laughs> like their players to be, as Coach Pida would say, palaban. So that competitiveness was that something that was just always in you from the beginning, something that you developed later on? Because a lot of basketball players, just from the start, from the get-go, they're kind of like, okay, I'm a killer on the court, right? I'm here to dominate. <clears throat> But some players kind of have to almost develop that mindset. So where do you fall in that spectrum? Well, I think I definitely fall in the second where I had to fall in mind with that mindset. Basketball was something I was honestly just doing as like a hobby. You know, I never really saw the end goal But I just knew I was attracted to basketball. And even after talking to one of my coaches, he told me, like, you didn't know, but you did. Because now it's like I have all these things coming to me. And it's just, I, I like winning. No one likes losing. But, like, I think I hate losing more than I like winning. So mm -hmm. I want to go win. I want to dog whoever my matchup is. And, uh, you know, I, I enjoy screaming in someone's face. I enjoy getting, um, you know, hitting a tough bucket, locking somebody up. And there's times where I won't be as vocal and I'll just be quiet. I'll be locked in. But whatever you see out there, whether it's me yelling at somebody in their face or me just being looking calm and composed, I want like I'm always competing and it just looks different sometimes, but I'm always competing. Is winning rookie of the year on your list of things to do? <clears throat> I think it would be a blessing if it fall if it fell in line. You know, I just want to give my best to UST. And I think if I do that, then. It might as well come my way, but I'm not too worried about the accolades. I just want team success. And I know that sounds like the media answer, but it's true. I just like winning. Do you think you have the potential to be a starter right away for you, Steve? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to leave that up to coach. I'm just going to go in there and play. And if he thinks I should be a starter, I should be a starter. But you, like you said, I, you know, I'm a competitive guy. I'm going to work my way up if I have to, or if I'm in a good spot, I'm going to work to keep it. Absolutely. Zayn Mamu joining us, everybody. Zayn, thank you so much, man. We're looking forward to watching you in the MBTC. We're looking forward to watching you in UAP Season 87. I'm, and I'm sure that the sky is the limit for you and you're only going to get better as the months and the years progress. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Always good talking to you, Naveen. And uh, I'll see you soon. Philippines, I'll see you soon. USC, I'll see you soon. It's going to be fun.